All right, so welcome uh, to the session Methods in the Laboratory. My name is Dan Hauser. I'm from the Interdisciplinary Center for Economic Science at George Mason University. Very happy to be here. I thank John List and Anya and Templeton for putting together uh, what is a truly wonderful and amazing uh, conference. Uh, uh, hopefully we can uh, get together and make a lot, uh, have a lot of productivity as a result of this. So very happy to be here. Um, housekeeping, we're going to run this as 20-minute talks. We will have 20 minutes in total for each talk. Uh, that means that hopefully each presenter will run for about six, 15 to 17 minutes for their talks, and uh, then we'll have two to three minutes of questions at the end. Uh, so please, other than clarifying questions, let's hold our, our questions until the, until the end, given our, the tight time constraints that we are working on uh, here today. Um, so before I turn it over to the speakers, uh, I was told that I had five minutes to introduce the session. Uh, that's a dangerous thing to say, as John noted earlier, academics like to talk. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm going to take advantage of that and sort of just say a couple of really very brief words for those of us in the room who maybe don't think about these things every day. Um, so, so let me uh, note there are sort of two, broadly speaking, related questions that, that we're asking when we do experiments. Uh, and this is sort of what decisions do people make? And often we want data then. We're going to generate some data that inform decisions, say in a particular environment of interest. And we also want to know how do people make those decisions? Now these are separate questions, right? So what decisions do people make? That can be very important if we are interested in a particular context, a particular environment. Uh, how do we promote charitable giving on, in particular types of fundraising drives, that can be very important. Note, having that data may then also help us understand how people actually make their decisions. Now, that's a theoretical question. How do people make decisions? Knowing the theory may help us be able to better move forward in designing new mechanisms to promote, for instance, pro-social activity, right? Now, this may seem natural, uh, but it turns out that confusion between these two types of questions can often lead to confusion in the way people are interpreting our results. So there's a, uh, you can think about generosity, for instance, in laboratory environments as compared to natural environments, and there's sort of a stylized fact out there that, well, in the lab, people are more generous with found money than they are in natural environments. The typical example being, well, in the lab, when people find they have some extra money they didn't have before because the experimenter gives them some money. They're generous with it. They share with an anonymous stranger. But when people win a lottery, they don't always share with anonymous strangers uh, at the same rate that we see people sharing in the lab. So is that a cause for concern? Well, often these games are not meant to inform precisely what people decide in natural environments, but rather how they decide in natural environments, you see? So we're not always looking for parallelism in decisions. Sometimes we are, but not always. We're not always looking for parallelism in decisions. Often we're looking for information regarding how people make decisions. And in this case, there's a very nice paper by uh, Christina Beccari and Erta Schau, who is sitting here, uh, in 2009. They, for example, offer evidence that people, de uh, people decide to do what they believe others would do in that same situation. So if we think about the lottery versus the generosity in the lab example, people in the lab believe other people would share in this context, and so they share. People in natural environments after winning a lottery, they don't believe that people would share maybe quite so much, and so they don't share quite so much. But the point is that through the lab, we can inform how people make decisions. We're not always looking for parallelism in the decision itself. Uh, okay, so we have these two questions, what decisions do people make and how do people make decisions? And in fact, in this particular session, we're going to see examples of both. Uh, what decisions do people make? Well, Stephen Knowles and Angela de Oliveira are going to be speaking about this. Uh, and uh, how do people make decisions? Edward Milner and Maria Ricalde are going to be speaking on, on this topic so we can get uh, very nice papers uh, from all of our participants looking at um, all of these issues. Okay, great. So that's all I wanted to say to uh, sort of set the foundation for what we're going to be talking about today. And so without further ado, and because I see my time is up, uh, I will introduce our first speaker. 
And our first speaker is indeed Mara, uh, Maria Ricalde from the University of Pittsburgh, who will be speaking on intuitive generosity and error-prone inference from decision time. Maria. <laughs> 